Hi friends, Pastor Ed Boston here with you this evening. And I wanted to, I'm excited. I, I'm excited about doing this update. President Donald Trump is on fire for religious liberties. That's right. Listen to this. HHA, HHS Secretary Alex Azar calls Trump the greatest protector of religious liberty who ever sat in the Oval Office. Respected Christian leader Dr. Robert Jeffries said this, I don't think it's any exaggeration at all to say no president in history has been a greater champion for religious liberty both in America and around the world than President Donald Trump. He also added that many of our founding fathers specifically talked about the need for prayer. If you know me, you know the founding fathers and their Christian beliefs and the way they founded our nation. It's one of my favorite topics, but we're not talking about that right now. I'm going to talk about several different parts, different topics, but none is more historic than President Trump attending in person the annual March for Life in Washington, D.C. President Trump will be the first president to ever attend this event in person. Vice President Mike Pence addressed the March for Life rally in 2017, at that time becoming the first sitting vice president to do so in person. On January the 19th, 2018, President Trump became the first president to address the March for Life rally via live satellite. I, this almost takes your, your, what can you say? I'm speechless almost. What good news that is for the right to life people. March for Life. Next, commemor commemorating National Religious Freedom Day, President Trump hosted a group of Christian, Jewish, and Muslim students and teachers of all faiths, faiths that have been discriminated against for expressing their religion at school, and he signed new guidance on that. Now, he had I, I read, and I didn't list them here, but it, the gentleman that lost his job over prayer at a high school game, he was one of the people that were there. And different stories from all these three different religions. And President listened to what they had to say. Also, the President has declared January 22nd, the anniversary of the 1973 Roe v. Wade decision imposing abortion on demand across the country to be National Sanctity of Human Life Day. In a proclamation, Trump declared that every person, the born and unborn, the poor, the downcast, the disabled, the infirm, and the elderly has inherent value, and said that the U.S. proudly and strongly reaffirms our commitment to protect the precious gift of life at every stage from conception to natural death. He touted his administration's pro-life achievements at home and abroad, this proclamation referenced his administration's efforts to build an international coalition to dispel the concept of abortion as a fundamental human right. That's just crazy. And said that his administration would oppose any projects that attempt to assert global right to taxpayer-funded abortion on demand up to the moment of delivery. He said, we will never tire of defending innocent life at home or abroad. The proclamation also referenced the recent decline in the number and rate of abortions in America. On the White House website, there's a quote that says, America is a nation of believers, and together we are strengthened by the power of prayer. President Donald Trump. Now, why is this important? Well, I, I just copied what the, the press release said. A voice in the White House, President Donald Trump signed an executive order to ensure that faith-based and community organizations that form the bedrock of our society have strong advocates in the White House and throughout the federal government. Protecting prayer in public schools, President Trump remains committed to protecting every student's constitutional right to pray. The Trump administration is taking action to further safeguard students constitutionally protected right to pray in school. President Trump is 
updating federal guidelines regarding, regarding protected prayer and religious expression in public schools, which has not been issued since 2003. The update will help self-guard students' rights by giving the education providers and students the most current information concerning prayer in public schools. That's important because there's a lot of misinformation out there. The update will help safeguard students' rights by giving providers and students, I, I'm reading the same line again, the most current information concerning prayer in public schools. To receive federal funds, local government Local educational agencies must confirm that their policies do not prevent or interfere with constitutionally protected rights outlined in the guidance. The updated guidance will help improve an individual's ability to, ability to file a complaint if they are denied the ability to participate in protected religious expressions. The new guidance makes clear that students can read religious texts or pray during recess and other non-instructional periods. They can organize prayer groups and express their religious beliefs in their assignments. In addition to the updated guidance on the prayer in schools, the Trump administration took action across federal agencies releasing proposed rules to ensure religious organizations are not discriminated against by the federal government. The Office the White House Office of Management and Budget will also direct federal agencies to ensure states and other recipients of federal grants don't engage in a religious discrimination. This is big stuff, folks. President Trump is protecting your rights, my rights, freedom from the freedom from those who want Christians silenced. No more. Thank you, President Trump. God bless you and go out and do the right thing.